and proceed to clear. Once we're done clearing, we're going to send them back in squads of two, so 50-50% strength <coughs> is uh, going back. Hello, everyone. I know that this video is coming out pretty late, but I just wanted to make a series of videos that can help people know what to expect with Milsom West. Therefore, these videos will include my insight and explanations as to what our missions were and what's going on. Now, if mission briefs aren't your thing and you just want action, don't worry, I got you covered. Just look in the description below for timestamps. Alright, let's get started. The situation for Return to Savropol was that NATO forces had been kicked out of the area the year previous by Russian forces. Therefore, Task Force Hunter was being deployed to the area to seize it back. On our first night, our mission was to kick out Russian forces at a barn and establish a fob. We would be conducting an airborne insertion into the AO. Now, I wish I had footage of this engagement, but I think you can understand why I don't. So I'll do my best to describe what happened as briefly as possible, because it's important to understand the Milsom West experience. I was a part of 1st Platoon, 1st Squad, attached to the Canadian team Trainwreck, acting as Bravo team leader. Our chalk for the jump was chalk 6, which meant we were one of the last to jump. Chalks 1 and 2 would be jumping here, then moving here in preparation to be the main assault element. Chalks 3 through 7 would deploy here, then move south to set up a blocking position along this tree line. Where chalk 6 actually deployed was here. When we pushed south, we walked right into the enemy lines and were engaged as we crossed this open field. First platoon almost immediately disintegrated, forcing us to pull back. Despite the chaos, we slowly found our way back to friendly forces and re-established our platoon. The rest of the assault went off without as dramatic of complications. Now, I felt like I needed to talk about this story because it's a demonstration about the nature of Milsom West. Normally, Milsom West events tend to be very free flow. A lot is left up to the task force commanders of how they want to run things. However, every now and then you'll get a gem of a scripted moment just like this, and that can lead to some crazy situations. As a new day dawned, the task force deployed 3rd platoon to seek out and harass the Russian FOB somewhere in these woods. 1st and 2nd platoons were kept back to provide security for our FOB and deploy QRF as needed. That meant a lot of engagements in these open fields. 1-1 one, one, engaging! One more engaging! One more engaging! One more B, move left! Bravo! Viking left! Here, Riley noticed the direction of the wind and up. sprinted to take advantage of it. You've got a crossing field of fire. You can shwack them all in a line here. Yeah. One one actual, one one actual. This is one one Bravo. It was Over. here that I realized that we had caught the enemy in an L shape and we needed to push our advantage.
Keep holding here. Keep pushing it in! Keep pushing it in! Close it in! Keep sweeping! Keep sweeping! With the wind to our back and superior positioning, we now had to employ Zombie Land's first tool and push our advantage. Dude, that wind was terrible. Oh. All right, I'll take security. Enemies on the ridge, left side. Enemies, watch, go on. All right, set security, set security. If you consent to a search, you got to search them. You don't ask them questions. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys learned a lot about how the flow of Milsom West goes, about some of the nuances about it, and gained some tips and insight as to what it takes to play at one of these games. Tune in next time as we go behind enemy lines. And as always, remember the primary rule of Airsoft, don't be a douchebag. <laughs>